I am crazy for Latin flavours. I love the heat and I love the sprightliness and I have a super speedy take on it all. This has got to be the next big thing. I've got a no-cook dinner party with rocamole, an addictive, luscious blue cheese and avocado dip, alongside ceviche confetti, delicious chopped fish cured in a fiery lime marinade. The grand finale is margarita ice cream, the very stuff of dreams. Then there's my ever-ready, anytime favorite, sweet corn chowder with cheese top tortilla chips. And for an irresistible late night snack, a quickly griddled hot quesadilla, and that's a toasted, meltingly delicious cheese sandwich. This is a tango for the taste buds, my express route to a fast fiesta. So, mm, some tortilla wraps, ham, or spring onion, cheese. I am ready. I'm making a quesadilla. Quesadilla is a toasted cheese sandwich such as you might eat in heaven. And it's the quesadilla that really started me being a Latin food lover. This is the deal. You have one soft flour tortilla and you cover it with ham. I'm using Spanish Serrano ham, gorgeous and dry cured. The exact measurements are really immaterial here. The idea simply is that you cover the whole of this soft tortilla disc with ham. And then some cheese. Let's grate it over, but this time just over one side. So really you're just grating on a half moon of cheese, any hard cheese you want. And also snip one spring onion. And these still keep their crunch when they're grilled. And then some pickled jalapenos. I can use my scissors both to pull out and snip the jalapenos. What surgical precision here. Should have been a doctor. You can fill a quesadilla with whatever you want. The options are pretty well endless. I feel now like a little bit of chopped coriander. It's done. Now, fold the side that's just got the ham on it over on top of the other side. So really you have a modestly bulging crescent and then lightly brush with oil. This is so gonna hit the spot now, but I have to say, I can't think of a bad time to eat a quesadilla. So brush the other side and convey immediately and with not too much rapaciousness to the heated griddle. You can use an ordinary frying pan for this. I just love those charred lines you get from using a ridged griddle. Just press down. This really takes about a minute aside, if that. Just flip it over. I'm going to get a plate. Oh, I think is to cut it mm. and we're away. What's great about a quesadilla is that you get all the wonderful warm ham, the melting cheese, but the tortilla wrap itself becomes almost like a crispy shell that contains it. I like to cut this semicircle into three triangles. Mm. Quesadilla of love. Mm. Mm. What, what are you doing? Well, um, I just finished my science about the Mondial Digestive System. I've got so much homework. My Latin fever has taken over my family cooking too, and I always have a stash of ingredients, so whatever the time, whenever the children need feeding, I can do it. I've got some black beans, really beautiful. I love black beans, and so do they. And strange to say, they also like these pickled 
peppers. They're not as hot as the sliced ones for some reason. I've got tortilla chips. Well, just about every sort of tortilla, frankly, because we are tortillas a go go here. I've got vegetable stock, which I need now for my sweet corn chowder with cheesy, crisp tortilla topping. Yum. And not very Latin American, I know, but I need it. Semolina. So if I always have these on hand to make supper from my other pantry, AKA the freezer, I've got some sweet corn. Obviously the essential prime ingredient for the chowder. I've got 500 grams of frozen kernels. Not that they'll be frozen for very long. I mean, obviously you can just take them out of the freezer earlier, but we don't always remember to do that. So just pour over some hot water from a kettle, a bit of a stir. And the reason I use frozen corn rather than canned is very straightforward. I just think you make better soup out of frozen. But I do need them soft. I'm doing this slightly back to front, which is to say I'm going to process the corn now, not at the end of making the soup, which is normal. This makes the soup taste much better because you break down the corn now. But perhaps most helpful is that at stress o'clock, you do not want to be blending hot liquids. So on top of the corn, I've got two spring onions. Obviously, there's no need to chop them up because they are going into the processor, but just cut them into three each. And now a clove of garlic, just a small one. In that goes. And I know this sounds a bit strange, but it works three spoonfuls of semolina. But I like the semolina, not just because it thickens the soup, and a chowder is a thick soup, but because its yellow sweetness echoes the yellow sweetness of the corn. Quick blitz, and we're almost there. Perfect. So this goes into the pan. And on top of this sunshine yellow mixture, I want just under a litre of water. And a slug or two of concentrated vegetable stock. Well, use any stock you want. So heat on. And it won't take a minute, really, to come to the boil. And then, from when it starts bubbling, it'll be cooked in 10 minutes, and that is all. And while this is cooking, I'm going to get ready a final flourish, a special treat for the children, the chowder's crowning glory. I need some cheese from the fridge. A tray. And some tortilla chips, but make sure you use lightly salted or even unsalted ones here. And grate over any cheese of your choice. Tangy cheddar's good. So these get warmed through and the cheese melts a bit. And then I give each child a shallow bowl full of soup and then a generous handful of this and what that means is you get the soup some of the chips go soggy some of them stay crisp and the whole of the top is melted cheese so while well, the soup finishes cooking I'll pop these in the oven it's at 200 degrees by which time the chips will be warmed through the cheese will be molten and tea will be ready Mimi, Phoebe, Bruno, come now. Come along. There's some spoons. Some two napkins. My pleasure. Okay. It's good. Thank you, darling. Can I have a school today? Hard. Is it? Good. You're tired. No. 
homework. I've got loads. No homework. I've got homework. I don't believe you've got no homework. No, I... I've got a little bit more. Any more for any more? Yeah, please. Okay. When it's cold and grey outside, I generate heat by cooking to that speedy Latin beat. And I tell you, it's not just a passion, it's an obsession. In fact, I'm so inspired, I'm throwing a laid-back Latin supper party tonight. Kind of a posh picnic dinner. No cooking involved, so you can relax. And the culmination of this fast fiesta is my margarita ice cream. And it is gloriously easy. The thing about most ice creams is that you need not only to make a custard and then let it cool, but you also need expensive, complicated gadgetry, you know, and churn it. Not this one. I just throw everything in the bowl, mix it up, put it in the freezer, and then tonight it'll be ready. That's a bit early in the morning to go to the drinks cabinet, but I need the requisite liqueurs. I think it's probably true to say that most of the stuff in here is Italian in origin, but I do have my Mexican moments. Witness this bottle of mezcal. This is a cactus liqueur, and in it are two worms, which I'm afraid I've been too scary cat to drink. I mean, pathetic. Not the case with the golden tequila. My shot days may be over, this makes a wonderful tequila sour. Think whiskey sour, only with a bit of salsa to it. What I need for my ice delight right now is just normal tequila and orange liqueur. Until I made this, I didn't think it would be possible to improve on a margarita cocktail, but now I know it is. Sorry, folks, but that's the truth. I start off with icing sugar, 150 grams. Big white mountain of it. Over that, about 125 millilitres of lime juice. And you can see that I am, without shame, using the lime juice you get in a bottle. If you want to squeeze five or so limes first thing in the morning, be my guest. And on top of that, two tablespoons of tequila, of course, and three of any orange liqueur you want. If you mix these together, the sugar will dissolve in the lime juice and alcohol. And then it's just a matter of pouring in 500 millilitres of double cream, whisking as you go. Normally I do everything at breakneck speed, but I'm whisking rather slowly so that I just don't make a mess. I'm a bit late for that. And I don't want it whisked until it's stiff. What I want is to whisk it until it's thickened but gorgeously soft still. So when you lift the whisk up out of the mixture, you can see that the cream keeps its form. One of the other things I love about this is that it doesn't set as hard as traditional ice creams. You still get a wonderful, voluptuous, soft creaminess. I could really eat this as it is, but I will hold off. It is, after all, breakfast. Tight squeeze, but it will go. So into the freezer with this, and it's so easy that, frankly, I've got plenty of time. I will manage to get the shopping done at lunchtime, and then everything is so quick that, at the end of the day, I shall rustle up my rockamelli and ceviche in no time. Normal life means that even when I've got people coming for supper, I still have to do the shopping at lunchtime. Don't mind a quick lunch as long as I know I'm going to eat well in the evening. And I love shopping for food a lot more than I like shopping for clothes. And I suppose in the same sort of way, I've never set much store between this whole food as fashion and what's hot and what's not. As far as I'm concerned, all food is in fashion. Having said that, 
if I had to state something on what the next big thing was going to be, I would say definitely Latino cooking. It's got such zing and all the flavor and no fuss. Obviously, I'm not Latin American. It's not going to be authentically Latin American, but I'll tell you what, it has to be authentically good, and that's what matters. So when I've bolted this down, I'm off down Mexico way. All right, I need some things to dip in the rocamole. Oh, radishes, oh, great for crunch. Sugar snaps, that's easy. leafy celery. Hello. I think I'd like that lovely piece of rock for just there, please. A nice piece of creamy rock for. Lovely. Thank you very, very please much. Enjoy. I will. So, can I have about 500 grams of monkfish fillet, please? Yes. Thank you. So it's back to slaving over a hot computer for me, but at least no slaving over a hot stove for supper. I come blinking out of the darkness of my study into the lightness of my Latin evening. This, my chopped ceviche, is one of my favorite quick recipes. Ceviche is fish that is somehow cooked in acid, here, lime juice. And the smaller the pieces, the faster it takes to cook. So instead of a good hour or two, which is what ceviche normally needs, because the chunks are big, these small, finely chopped pieces of fish need eight minutes maximum and that is it. I've got 500 grams of monkfish fillet here. I often use half this amount because you can have this simply as a pre-dinner snack but for me now it is the meal. I can assure you that chopping a bit of fish is not hard work. Anyway I like a bit of chopping. For me this is my decompression time and I come out of work mania and slip into mex mode. Right, that's all my fillets chopped. Pile them here and onto that tumble of fish confetti. I want to add about two teaspoons of coarse salt. If you're using fine flowing salt, don't use more than one teaspoon there. On a teaspoon of oregano, dried oregano, so that's simple. You can always have that in house. And this is how I'm going to cook the fish in lime juice. And it is not at all like eating raw fish when it's done. The fish, which is now glassy with a bit of a moonstone shimmer, will be white and opaque, like fish that you might bake in the oven. Right, I'm gonna wash my hands and get another board. Amongst the soft little cubes of fish, it's nice to have a bit of crunch. And I'm finely slicing three spring onions to so strew amongst that. Traditionally, proper onions are used, but I think this is preferable. It's so much lighter and fresher. And I like a little heat. I've got a jalapeno pepper. You can use any chili pepper you want, really. Take the seeds out, but not fastidiously so. I'm going to chop this finely as well because you want the little filaments of heat, if you like, to be diffused throughout the fish. And third in my green trinity, a good bunch of coriander, nice fat bunch. Chop this as well. Now the fish has had its eight minutes. Let's get 
rid of the juice because once it's had its eight minutes, the fish will just get too cooked. So press that down a bit to get rid of any extra lime juice. I'm going to tip it back here for a second because I have work to do. Right, so this is ready for the green flecks now. In with all this finely chopped greenery. Have a bit of a stir around. A taste. Mm, perfect. A bit more salt for me. And now it's going to pile this rather haphazardly into the bowl. Actually, I think hands will be easier. Look at that, mounded up. And this mound goes very far. And it goes very far because there's only so much you can mound onto each chip. And I know, because I've tried. Final scattering of green. So traditionally, ceviche's big chunks that you eat with a knife and fork, and these are best piled on to a tortilla chip. Now I know everything is good on a tortilla chip, but this is fantastic. So this is ready, and I'll just take it out onto the table now. A bit of a wipe down onto the rocamole. Right, rocamole. My mother always said to me that no matter what I did in life, nothing would match the achievement of being tall. Well, compared to her, I was tall. But I, sorry, differ. Because what I am proudest of, no matter what I do, is my rocamole. Rocamole is a mixture of blue cheese, roquefort, and avocados, like the guacamole. And it is a combination made in food heaven. I would start off by crumbling the cheese into a bowl. I've got 125 grams of Roquefort. And on top of that, about four tablespoons of sour cream. And two ripe, they must be ripe obviously, avocados. I love the sound of the spoon rasping against the shell of the avocado as you gouge everything out. Right, so first step, mash everything together. I mean, this is very easy because all three components are soft and yielding. And anyway, they want to commingle. They know it's good for them. Again, as with the ceviche, I don't want to use a proper round onion. It'd be far too invasive and strong here. So I'm just slicing up two spring onions instead. In go these little jade green discs, and then a bit of heat with some pickled jalapenos. If you can't find pickled jalapenos, don't worry, just use gherkins or dill cucumbers and add a teeny bit of chilli, but I get them from the supermarket, it's easy. And it's the vinegariness of the pickled jalapenos that works so well here. It really adds sort of a counter taste to the full richness of the rest of the dip. Just sprinkle over the chopped vinegary jalapenos and stir everything together. That's it. Just scrape the whole lot in. It may look like a small bowl, but this is very rich. And I want different tortilla chips. I want those natural unsalted blue corn ones. I think it's nice to have a slight vegetable element as well. So I'm going to put on the table 
a vase of celery, all leafy and fabulous, and I shall splash the table with crunch and colour by getting out a bowl, filling it with radishes and sugar snap peas. I think a slight dusting of paprika. How beautiful. So, bar a little bit of table dressing and my own dressing, my fast fiesta, it's done. table is beginning to take shape. I mean, look at that colour with the radishes and sugar snaps, plus vegetables I don't need to chop. And I have to say, the celery in this jug looks as beautiful to me as a vase full of flowers. And one more thing, some limes. You've got to have the limes. I mean, they'd be nice for spritzing into our beer or maybe a bit extra on the rocamole, but besides, I need them for pudding. I think I can leave that now. I feel a bit of a hoot earring coming on and I'll be back to the cantina in a minute. My rocamole, which is really like guacamole but with blue cheese in it. The rocamole is absolutely delicious. I really like the blue cheese in it. Mm. Mm. The blue cheese is a little touch of my own. So inspired by Latin food, but not necessarily constrained by its traditions. And I've got chopped ceviche. Ceviche. So, have you cooked this or is it cooked in the lime? It's cooked in the lime, exactly. It's steeped in the lime oh. with some oregano. I've got a real thing about Latino food at the moment. Can't stop cooking to that salsa beat. It's coming, it's coming. It's all good. I'm just going to rush off, but the cantina's not closed. I shall be back in with a little Latin inspired pudding in a moment. You can finish that up. Okay, Operation Margarita ice cream is in full flow. Okay, I have to do the rest of my wares. I'll do the ice cream, but you can do your own glasses. I'm going to put a bit of sugar and a bit of salt in my special glass dipping bowl. If you put a bit of lime on the rim of your glass. Around the rim. Yes. And then dip in here with a dredging action. And then margarita ice cream. It really is. With this ice cream, you don't need to have a churner. I just mix it up and put it straight to the deep freeze, so it's frankly very easy. Oh, the smell of lime. Mm. Mm. That is really fantastic. Thank you. Delicious. I can't get enough of it. Lovely. I've scraped my glass clean. Mm. 